wonder why that all of us must die, but there is hope for you and me. When the end is near, you don't have to fear. You know the Lord will lay His hand on you. If you need a friend when you're near the end, the Lord is waiting to be at your side.
donations, whatever it took to keep the rain away last night. It was really a, a pleasant evening for everyone. We had about 100 people last night, which is what we have here tonight, too. So it's terrific, terrific crowd. We're delighted that she could join us tonight and uh, asked her if she was willing to say a few words. And she is. So please, welcome to the Edgewood High School. But as I was driving up here today from Chicago, I was thinking about the years you were in high school, and I was thinking about the 10 years that I was had the uh, privilege of teaching in Edgewood. And I thought, I don't know who wrote this, but I saw it somewhere recently. It said, memory is the gratitude of the heart. And I was thinking, as I remember driving up, those years of Edgewood, and I remember you people, because by the time you got there, I had learned to teach. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, my heart is so full of gratitude for the privilege of teaching at Edgewood High School with that wonderful faculty, all of whom I know you treasure, with that wonderful principal, Kathleen O'Connell, Sister Kareem, Because of Kathleen's wisdom, some of you may have been in detention. <laughs> no. <laughs> but you know what, I, this, this is just an aside, you know what I learned about my second or third year teaching? The first year teaching, uh, even taking attendance was hard. <laughs> anyway, by the third year, if students came late to class, I would be very careful to close the door immediately when the bell rang. And then they would come in, if someone came in. Probably a boy. <laughs> came in and, and about to go to a seat. Oh, I said, John, oh, thanks so much for coming. But would you mind going down to the office and getting a permission slip to sit your clean? And of course, I meant he had a detention. <laughs> you know, but what I learned was never stop smiling. <laughs> and so down the to hear the mystery of life and death and grace and happiness and joy that are the weaving of each of your lives. And I'm sure you've done wonderful things. You know, and I don't always recognize you, but you know, eyes don't change. <laughs> and so sometimes when somebody gives you the name, then I know who you are. <laughs> so anyway, I thank you for inviting me to come. I'm just so thrilled to be here and to remember and celebrate with you. And uh, I regret I won't be at, at high school tomorrow to celebrate Eucharist with you because I have to drive back to Chicago for an afternoon meeting with our sisters. You know, we just love meetings. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. If there is a purgatory. <laughs> if there is a purgatory, which is a theological explanation, uh, those who did not go to enough meetings are there. <laughs> Kathy Heibel Grison remembers freshman year talking to an upper class boy when her half slip falls down around her ankles <laughs> with my sister's scapula, which I had it tied with. <laughs> and then she followed that up senior year choking on an orange as typing class begins going to the office and sister seraphica takes me into the priest's bathroom i still have trouble breathing so sister alfonsi gets someone with a car to drive me and sister seraphica to the er where they take off my sweater and cigarettes and matches come <laughs> Thank you. 
Casey uh, Shipley remembers good or bad memory. When the trash can in the girls' bathroom caught on fire because we put our cigarettes in here. Yes, we got we caught. <laughs> Dan Rafter remembers freshman year, Jim Skelton, Barb McGinnis, Lanny Haas, and I rehearsing in the practice room from room about the band room. The song was The Stripper by David Rose. Sister Alphonsine came barreling into the room, breathless from running up the stairs. And it turns out you could hear us in the cafeteria through the ventilation system. And the study hall. And then Tina Jeffrey Lunds, remember, one of my fondest memories, and there were a lot, is West Side Story and Jerry Caravello, amazing voice, and having to tie my shoes on so tight they wouldn't fly off while kicking to I'd like to be in America. <laughs> Mary Russell Curran remembers class mixers, twist, jerk, bunny hop, whatever, ancient history debate. That wasn't my favorite class. Oh, we left a larger footprint on Western, Silva on Western Silvation, the Greeks, or the Romans. Beatles concert in the auditorium, thanks to Mary Franken and Sylvia Kazmaier, Sister Urban's Roman banquets, Sister Janisa crossing her eyes and directing great plays, Sister Alana, senior English class in the tower or out of the roof. <laughs> Cindy Mueller Ostrom remembers smoke bombs on the windowsill in religion class, multiple toilet papering sessions, and enclosing an entire car at Tom Voss's in toilet paper. How easy it was to climb out onto the roof through the tower classroom window, the wonderful Wednesday barbecues at lunch, and rolling our skirts up as soon as you passed the kneeling test. <laughs> Tom Luther remembers graduation day, June 10th, 1966. We marched out in order of size, girls first, then the boys. I was the shortest boy in the tallest row. Father Hunt asked the guests to hold their applause until all graduates, graduates had received their diplomas, which they graciously did. So when we filled out to receive our diplomas opposite of how we filed in, it turned out that the last one in the last row and seemingly the one to receive any applause, I am proud to say that I graduated last in my first class of 66. Tom Voss <laughs> remembers a certain unnamed prominent member of the 66 reunion organization group thought of his own fun experience while candy canes were being made in chemistry lab during the holiday season. While the teacher, Sister Mary Carl, was out of the room, he decided to place the hose from the Bunsen burner onto the water faucet on the lab table and turn it on. The chem lab had a 15-foot ceiling, and the water pressure through the Bunsen burner had just propelled the water geyser blasting up to the ceiling. <laughs> And Steve, Ann, and Steve Annan remembers when football practice wasn't going too good and Coach E.J. Wilkie would tell us we looked like ex-cons carrying our shit out in buckets <laughs> and proceed to give us a visual by walking through like an orangutan dragging its knuckles on the ground. <laughs> and Jim Frisch remembers, by the way, do the locker rooms at EHS still bear the distinctive aroma from the aerosol spray of right guard? <laughs> Bill Marcus remembers Jeff Bishop driving around the circle with 69 on the side of his car and getting kicked off the football team for the homecoming game. Some of us were so naive. We didn't know what it meant and didn't know what all the commotion was about. Mark Rogers, are you here? You remember me when I was skinny? All right. Mark remembers running from the basement after first period to the towers for second period, also on the different names and nicknames we had for all the teachers. 
I'll give you one more. Jane Ryan Templeton. Though not able to attend, remembers, I moved to Madison my junior year, second semester, dev devastated to move and extremely shy. Everyone was kind to me. This was a huge blessing and shaped my entire life. My classmates were marvelous. I was fortunate to be fortunate to be a 1966 Edgewood graduate. Aww. I'm gonna end it with that one. Hey. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Tell them how much we miss them and wish they could be here celebrating with us at this really awesome reunion. I'm so glad all of you are here.